So um, you see how very little we actually need. Uh, and one of the biggest mistakes in, in casting is that you use, use too much um, of the material and you basically waste it. Now with the resin, we're going to show you a trick of how to deal with that if you do that. With, with the silicone, you don't really have an extra form ready. Um, so silicone, you want to be really careful with the measuring on this. All right? So now I'm just going to pour half of the silicone in this part and half of the silicone in the other one. Now you see me working with, without any gloves right now. Silicone really isn't that problematic as far as like being kind of uh, too radical for your skin to deal with. You do not want to get this in your eyes at any cost. Um, so having protective goggles or something on would, would be not the worst idea. But uh, as far as like skin is, irritation is concerned, it's not really problematic. All right, now we have an equal volume. It's still going to be a little too much, I think, but uh, we'll see. So now I'm just going to use this uh, ventilation. Um, I don't even know what it is. It's not a pulver. It's kind of like cream of some sort. Um, so this will actually um, make sure that the air bubbles will escape the silicone later uh, easier. So all I'm going to do is just, I, I have absolutely no idea how much I should be using of this. So I'm just going to put some good amount in here, something like this, I guess and um, put it into one component first and then stir, stir it real well. Now, right now we can do this for as long as we want to because nothing's going to happen to the silicone. As soon as you put those two uh, parts together, you want to work quickly. Um, you see right now, I'm actually there's air bubbles starting to form as I stir this. Uh, fortunately, this is unavoidable, but um, uh, we'll deal with this in a second. Okay, so that's that. Um, yeah, next step really is just to uh, put things together. I'm just going to walk you through the process because this is going to... It's time critical. I mean, it's not like you have to be really fast like with the resin. But um, here I'm just going to pull the blue into the yellow and then I'm going to stir this real uh, softly. No, I'm not going to kind of stir it up really hard uh, so that I don't catch too many air bubbles. But I want to make sure that I really get everything. So I just pull this in here. And now you know why we don't want those really long, uh, long pots, the, the long cups, uh, because all of the silicone will be caught on the side of the cup and will not come out. So the shorter they are, the less uh, waste basically is there, and and the more accurate the, your volumes are. Because if half of the of the one solution is sitting on the side of one of the cups, obviously that's not a good idea. Okay, I spilled a little here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and stir this. I want to scrape the sides of the pot every now and then. Also make sure to scrape the bottom. And you see how I get like kind of ye yellow lines inside the green and how the green um, step by step gets a little brighter in its color. And we have a minute or so to do this, uh, not much longer. You will actually feel if it gets, if, if you're doing this too long, it's gonna get really hard. Um, so that's, I usually give it like 30, 20, 30 seconds. Um, make sure I scrape it off again on the sides and on the bottom. Oh, this is going to be way too much anyways. can already tell. So, done with that. And now, I'm going to get this back, the little mirror. I will actually go up pretty high and pour on the side of this thing, if I can actually hit it. Hold on. Yeah, I did. Okay, so I'm pour pouring on the side. Let's, let's see if the camera can catch this. And you see how the, the liquid actually flows from the side and covers everything inside the, the little square. Now, the reason why I pour from the side is so that air bubbles don't form right on the, on the object itself uh, and they actually rise to the surface if, if I put it on the side. So I'm doing this in a long stream. As you can see from the top, it doesn't. I'm holding this about a good 10 15 inches up in the air, and it's a really thin stream of liquid. And the thinness makes sure that um, 
the air bubbles um, kind of come out as it streams down. You see I got a good amount left over, but this is good. This we will use later to check whether the silicone is um, cured or not. And it's already curing now. Now, we need to get those air bubbles out of there. And um, let me show you two methods of doing how to do that. Method number one, it's a plastic ruler. Okay, so what I do is I put the plastic ruler underneath the mirror, like so. Let me just, uh, and I put it on the uh, side of the table, and then I, you can, you can probably hear it, I, I hit the, um, the ruler, and the vibration will actually make sure that the air comes out. Now this is the best and easiest way to do it with a ruler. I actually put this thing on my airbrush compressor and let it run. And now you can see how that we have a lot of um, air bubbles on the top right now. Um, and uh, the compressor is really nice because it vibrates really hard. Um, and that's why, why I do it on the compressor. Um, it, it's, it's pretty good. Okay, now what I do, and this is just for cosmetics, I uh, pop the... Um, uh, what is the my tool? Okay. I pop the, bottle, the bubbles. Um, I think it just looks nice. And you got time anyway, so might as well do it. But I'm not going to bore you with this, I'm just going to take the camera off. Just a little thing I realized uh, while I'm doing this, which is, again, you don't have to do this, it's absolutely silly, I just like it, I don't know why. It's very calming and relaxing and it helps uh, your aim as well. But um, there's actually a spray out there, I don't, I don't know what name it is uh, um, and what brand it is, but that there's a spray that actually will uh, instantaneously uh, release all the bub bubbles on the uh, on the back side here. So if I spray it over this right away, it will actually break off the uh, up the silicone on the on the back and um, make a bubble-free environment. Uh, maybe if somebody of you knows what it's called, just leave it uh, leave it in the comments. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I don't know what it is. It helps if you make those popping noises. All right, we're about uh, 10 minutes into the curing, and um, obviously curing time will depend a lot on the product you're using. But you can see now here in the in the pot, it's almost um, solid in a way. It's, it's a little liquid on the outside still, but you really can't tear it anymore. I'll give it another 10 minutes or so, and it should be okay. All right, it's about another 10 minutes later, and as we can see from a little testing pot here, I can actually take out the whole thing in one piece. So you can actually see that I didn't stir it well in the bottom, it's still yellow, but since this is still in the pot, it's fine. Okay, so this is gone or done and I'll throw it away. And uh, now we get to, to the fun part of actually turning this whole sucker around because right now we've only done one side, we need to do the other side as well. So what I do, I can give it a little twist till it comes off and then I'm going to turn it around. Now there's now two ways of doing it. Uh, you can actually see that there's some leakage. I didn't really clean it very well, but honestly it doesn't matter. So there's two ways of doing this now. You can actually start pulling things out from the top. Uh, I will actually open the complete frame, which a lot of people will not do. Um, I have not had any problems with it yet, um, but uh, I'm just going to open the whole frame. And this is one of the nice things because of my little construction here. All I have to do is break these two pieces apart. Uh, which is not, you want to be careful with it still, but not overly careful, overly protective of this thing. I probably can leave the one side in here. And you can actually see how uneven this, uh, <laughs> this section here right now is. That's fine, we're going to fix this later. It's like little, this little thing here on the side, all I'm going to do is just going to pull it off so it's somewhat even. And now the not so much fun part is actually pulling all of this stuff out, which I will do start doing now. You can actually see I'm not too careful. The one thing I want to try to avoid is actually that I lift the the piece that we want to copy out of outside of the the green mold. If it actually does move out of there, it's not it's not really bad, but it's not good either because it could be that you will introduce air 
uh, into the whole system when you put it back in. But uh, we'll see how this goes. It's not the best way of doing it. Okay, you can actually see the piece coming out. I'm just going to use a little sculpting tool to remove the rest of this here without disturbing the middle plastic part too much. Yeah, uh, this I hate this part. <laughs> I really do. But oh well, what can you do? Now the one thing that needs to be 100% clean is the plastic. Well, it, has, well, it, has, it doesn't have to be 100% clean, um, it just helps you uh, save time later. Because if it's not 100% clean, you will actually fix the, the piece after you have molded it. Uh, might as well do it now. Now in this case I'm only making one copy. Um, and it, I mean, um, thinking about the cost uh, of everything including the resin, this little piece probably cost me about 5 bucks to make. It's not worth it. So uh, all of those guys are like, oh, cool, I'm just going to copy everything. I'm just going to be like a real... Oh, I shouldn't say that. I I'm going to bleep this out. Um, that's just not happening. So... All right, cleaning finished. Now we're just going to um, close the little um, frame again. Oh, sorry, we should do it on this side now, obviously. <clears throat> That's a little silicone between these pieces, but well, I have to probably cut it out. Should, should get it out anyways. You can see I'm just going to pull it off, and if I can't pull it off, I'm just going to cut it off. And done. Might as well do this for this little corner here when I'm at it, because um, I don't. I just want to be as as even and as flat as possible. I'll cut this off as well, and we're good to go. All right. And now basically we're doing the same thing as before, uh, with one exception. We're going to put a separator between the silicone and the next layer of silicone so that they don't stick together. Now, honestly, you don't have to do it. Every single time I tried to do it, I forgot, and it still worked. You can, when, when both silicone parts stick together, you can just tear them apart and, and it will tear at the right spot. So, so don't worry, especially with all the little residue of the, of the, uh, clay still being in there, you're fine. Nothing's going to happen. But again, I showed you earlier. I got this powder, this talcum powder that that um, you use for like gymnastics on your hand. But I also have this. It's a um, liquid. I think it's some sort of um, um, petrol kind of mix because if you open it, it really stinks like at the, at the gas station. Uh, and what all you do is use a really thin layer and uh, put it on top of everything. I will be using this if I don't forget it again. And now we're just going to create another uh, 22.5, or sorry, 12.5 mils of uh, silicone uh, of each. Uh, do the same mix. I'm just going to go through this real quick, and then we're going to cast the second half. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> 